Shop Plato's Closet tax-free August 2nd through 4th for back-to-school styles. We sell the trendy, gently used styles you need to make a difference in the world and in your wallet for back-to-school shopping. Save up to 70% off regular retail prices by choosing recycled styles. Save even more when you shop tax-free this weekend. Make a change that others can respect and repeat. Shop Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley this year for your back-to-school looks. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Talk, a no facts, all feelings wrestling podcast on the Social Suplex Network. I'm Allie. I'm Ann. And I'm Leah. I think I just really astounded my co hosts. Like, they were so <laughs> impressed with what I just did. Well, you usually, went into it so fast. Yeah, <laughs> usually before we start, you take like a deep breath and you like usually do like a whole stretch and then you like get into your whole thing. You started the podcast between one word and the next. That was crazy. yeah. Well, it's because I've been trying to corral. I've been trying to corral everyone for a while, but it wasn't working. I'll, I'll be honest. Be I've, like, been, I've been filibustering for the past. You, <laughs> you don't want to go. You don't want to do our podcast. You don't want to do like, our podcast. Should we start the podcast and then we're like in another thing? <laughs> more. I said I can't give. I can't give them one more inch of wiggle room. <laughs> I'm trapping them. And wow. look, and because once they hear the Trap. magic words of "Welcome to Tunnel Talk," <laughs> there's no way out. You're in the you're in the Elven realm now. The fairies gotcha. It activates us. It's like the Manchurian <laughs> Candidate. It's like oh, yeah. podcast mode. Here I am. <laughs> uh, how are you guys doing this week? <laughs> My raging case of coronavirus is no. getting better, so that's fun. <laughs> Ann's recovering from COVID. I have had a double ear infection all week, but Lee is fine. I was fine. Lee's thriving. Again, yeah. as we as we said, stools need one healthy <laughs> leg to stand. Stools need one healthy leg. <laughs> stools are self healing. The legs they they can be in bad shape or they can be in good shape. But as, as long, long as, as one, as long as, as one, one is leg, in good shape. That, hey, one's that's all you need. Wisdom. <laughs> That's a new folk wisdom that we're debuting tonight on the pod. Um, podcast business. Let's get this out of the way up front. Uh, listeners, you know that All In Fast approacheth. I believe it is next Sunday. That doesn't really seem possible. Yeah, but yeah. it is. Um, and you are... Ha- you have... Beloved family coming to town. Family's visiting, so I'm going to be taken out of the podcast rotation. Taken out. Anne has been removed, forcibly removed (laughs) from the podcast rotation. Uh, We will be welcoming a special guest to Mm -hmm. the podcast uh, in Anne's place. Should we say who the guest is or should we let them guess? Should we just say it's a a renowned cyber bully of the podcast? (laughs) Yes. Yes. I'm pretty excited yes. about that. Yes. A friend and yet, and yet a, uh, you know, villain. A friend yeah. and yet a tormentor, yeah. Uh, kind of a, yeah, kind of a beloved frenemy will be visiting yeah. the podcast yeah. and uh, and unpacking all in with us. We are extremely excited. Um, yeah, I'm sad that I won't, I won't be there for that one. We're going to have to do some, some more, it's a, the, the cyber bully... Un- unnamed is from <laughs> our beloved social suplex network. We're going to have to do some more crossover pods in future. We're going to have to, you know, to. yeah. Got to so that, around. so that we can all mix and mingle. Yeah. But, uh, that's our, that's our fun announcement. You can speculate among amongst yourselves. Um, <laughs> Leah, it's, your, it's your week to be happy. And I guess you've been doing it. Yeah. Are you care to share? Are you happy about how your ears and throat and lungs Yeah, Leah, feel? are you fucking happy? <laughs> My beloved, you know what makes me happy? My beloved friends being so nice to me. (laughs) You get what you give, baby. (laughs) All right. So I've been in like a pretty good mood the past two weeks, but I still like was sitting here being like, what single like object noun is like, I'm so bad at this. I find it so incredibly difficult, but I will say that. uh, So 
this weekend, this past weekend, uh, we went to my, my be- two best friends and I went to uh, my parents' beach house in Rhode Island and stayed for the weekend. And uh, I have gotten better as I got old, get older about sunscreening. And I literally never in my life remember oh. to put sunscreen on my lips. Never, ever, oh. ever. Yeah. Hmm. And so, um, of course, I come home with a... <laughs> With a cold sore developing, like oh, whatever, which I always get when it gets sunscreen out, and you're Did always you? happy about it. Always, always. Got, yeah, this is my this is my happiness segment. Yeah, yeah. I just really like having cold sores. Uh, did you guys are you guys aware? This is what's making me happy right now. I've just been like yeah. pleased about it all day. That urgent care now has telehealth appointments, mm. and it was like one of the greatest moments. I ha- found a telehealth appointment at Urgent Care an hour after I started looking. I logged on to Zoom. A man came on. And he verified <laughs> a my man? A man. I, sp- I willingly spoke to a man, and you know I don't wow. like to do that. I know that. <laughs> I was like, hey, can I have the uh, cold sore pills? And he was like, yeah. And then I got off the Zoom, and by the time like <laughs> I'd poured like a- another cup of coffee, it was at CVS. Wow. I love that. You know, I think that my health insurance has been trying to like pitch me on the telehealth urgent care. Like they send me stuff in the mail sometimes being like, what if you took advantage of this service? And (laughs) before this past couple of weeks, I really try not to go to the doctor. So I hadn't, but (laughs) I'll keep it in mind in future. What I will say Mm. during the, in the early pandemic, you remember when I got tonsillitis, like a little baby, the same way I had these ear infections, like a little fucking baby. (laughs) Um, they like, they were doing telehealth then because they didn't want you to come in with COVID. And I was impressed that they diagnosed me with tonsillitis. Uh, they just made me send them a picture of the inside of my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) So absolutely nasty. And I was staying with my parents at the time. So that's like one of my, one of my treasured COVID memories is like, I'm (laughs) so sick, like a baby going into the living room being like, mom, I can't get a good picture of the inside of my mouth. Can you take a picture? And she goes, okay, well open up. And then she looked and she was like, wow, that's nasty. Like she's like, it's bad in there. Disgusting. <laughs> uh, and then they gave me the meds. So wow. we've come a long way, baby. We have. We've really come a long way. We have. That pandemic really uh, pushed telehealth forward. I'll tell you, I work for a healthcare, electronic healthcare record, and uh, people put in a lot of effort to stand up telehealth in 2020. And but you know. I don't know. I don't know how I ever lived without it. The fact that I no longer have to go to my mel- mental health appointments wearing pants. Yes, pants. that's Hello? really Aww. the big thing. That's yeah. really the big thing. I love to get my every three months or whatever, my my psych, who I won't speak ill of in public, I guess, <laughs> call just call me on phone, usually 15 <laughs> minutes before my appointment. So I think that's fun. And then he just says, uh, you liking you like the meds? And I say, yeah, yep, still liking them. And he says, OK, I'll just put those in. Need anything else? That's the end. <laughs> OK, well. well that's, real I would caring. not say, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's that not means. really making the argument mm. for telehealth. I would say <laughs> that seems like the but wouldn't, against it. Wouldn't you be <laughs> angrier? Because I, ha- I did used to have to go see him in person. Wouldn't you be angrier if yeah. you had to drive 20 minutes oh, yeah, of course. and wait Nobody, in a waiting room yeah. for that to happen? Yeah. No. That's true. Yeah. No, I, of course, no. Of course, no. I'm just like, my, my psych makes me. First of all, be on video, and second of all, she's like makes me like respond to disgusting statements like, "Have you sat with your thoughts lately?" And you know, why should I? I know. You no, know, she's always like, she's always like, "I need you to take more walks without podcasts." And I'm like, "For what?" I don't think so. Oh my! Well, I don't see that happening. I know it. Y'all want to talk about wrestling? <laughs> Out, you know, that's a kind of a good transition because somebody just out keep doing there, a little telehealth out here. Somebody <laughs> out there may be on a walk right now with mm. us in their ears, and maybe mm. they just thought, like, "Wow, I'm so grateful that I'm not walking with my own thoughts, and that instead <laughs> I'm walking with the Tunnel Dog Girls." And if you if you are out there, we salute you, and oh, we yeah. are just like you. Yeah, yeah. we are chasing away those thoughts just as quickly as you are. Yeah. You're on a walk or on a commute or doing your dishes, you know? Whatever you're doing, we're, we're happy, happy to, to have you. you. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
<laughs> just going into some smooth jazz. <laughs> Late nights with the Tunnel Dog Girls. Whatever you're doing, we're happy to be there with you. This is Let's Delilah. Talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we've we've simply got to discuss wrestling. Um, as they open Dynamite, so too shall they open Tunnel Talk. Mercedes and Sheeta fought this week. Was this? I think that Trish said she thought this was the first time a woman's match ever opened the show. Is that I true? Think I that mean, it seems feels right. right. I can't think of another time. They've closed no, a few times, but I've they've never seen yeah. a few times. And I mean, it's pretty rare for them not to be at nine twenty, to be honest. So, yeah. like, opening I know, the show. And at this point, like when the show opened, and I didn't hear MJF's music, I was a little startled. <laughs> and then, I mean, wow. I, and I have, I have to say. Listen, we're not gonna we're not gonna spend a ton of time shitting on MJF tonight, and we'll just check in on him really briefly later. But I was really worried about what was gonna happen to us when we tuned into Dynamite this week, and Mercedes and Camille coming out to open the show. It was like the universe was saying, "It's gonna be okay, girls. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. have a nice time tonight." And you, know, yeah. I really did. I had, had a really, really nice, nice I had a night. Great time. Yeah, it was the first time in a while I said that was an enjoyable episode of Dynamite. Yeah, but I, I saw all I, kinds of things I liked and hardly anything I didn't like. I saw lots of things I liked, but I know that I'm really like kind of like um, like a, a mean grizzled wrestling vet now <laughs> because I want to be very very clear. Tony, do not take credit for my pleasure this week. Okay, <laughs> if you turned your ass around and did things differently because everyone was yelling at you, it's not a win for you. Okay, we are back at baseline. <laughs> So I don't want to hear any boasting or bragging about, oh, you guys thought you weren't having fun, but then look who had fun. No. It, things changed this week. We changed yes. it up, and yeah. that's all. We're back to baseline. It's not yeah. a win. Okay? Yeah. Win for me, not for you. Mm. We have to keep him humble. Absolutely. <laughs> and he listens. I mean, he's... Of Our course, opinion means the yeah. world to him, <laughs> every, obviously. Every week he tunes in and he says, when don't they send me a plaque? They send all my wrestlers plaques. They've never, they've never given me a damn plaque even once. He, maybe he if you book it, good for a month. <laughs> he opens the mail excitedly like, ooh, who, who did the Tunnel Talk send a plaque to you this week? And it's like, oh, it's just Matt Jackson again. <laughs> just imagining mm-hmm. that he has to be the mailman and go around and hand, <laughs> hand, hand the plaques out like, uh, you know, like, when the like the in Mean Girls buying the flowers, like you buy the candy and stuff. Mm, well, you know yeah. what I mean. Do you remember being a little kid? I remember being a little kid and being like, "Why does Dad get all the mail?" It's like all bills, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tony Khan with the plaques. <laughs> he's he's really downtrodden. He has to hand out the plaques, but then he does still have his his stack of bills, which mm. could be bigger because there's more things I want you to pay for, Tony. And I wish you would mm. just give me the card. I wish you would just. Please, I would spend <laughs> Tony's mo- money so much better. So good. So much more fun. So much better. And I wouldn't spend it even extravagantly, I don't think. Like, there's no. lots of things that I would buy that don't cost that much, but the pleasure they would bring is immeasurable. I might yeah. spend it a little bit extravagantly. What, what's the bit. most extravagant thing you would buy? <laughs> the Lucha Brothers. <laughs> That's not that extravagant. How extravagant can that be? A, a couple of tag teams? There's just two tag teams. How much teams can one banana money cost, on? Michael? <laughs> I have Tony's Am- Amex, and then in my shopping cart is just <laughs> full of tag teams. I'm like, Motor City Machine Guns are getting in there. <laughs> I, like, I put MXM on the main lineup. Yeah. You hand Tony his card back, and you're like, just bought a couple of things. And he's like looking at the receipt, and he's like, okay, so we got some, so we got some tag teams. And, and how did the sit down go? And you go, what sit down? And he's like, well, you haggled, right? You haggled for them. <laughs> Like this is what the price tag said, Tony. I actually paid above just asking. Pay the price. <laughs> just to be sure, just to be sure they wouldn't. WWE yeah. could not undercut us. I, I mean, they made they made me an offer, and I just added a zero. I just, they I made just, me that an just offer. Felt right. I couldn't refuse. <laughs> it's called redistribution of wealth, Tony. God. This is like how. Um, is it CM Punk who's having this like fantasy? He's leaking that WWE came to him yeah. to renegotiate yeah. to give him more money. Yeah, yeah. they were right. so happy with his merch sales and his numbers <laughs> that they came to him to give him more money. And I think we all heard that and said, "That's how companies work. That's yeah. exactly what they do." And then my and companies the already whole bus clapped. <laughs> the whole bus, bus clapped. They're like, we kind of had you locked in for three years at this salary, but we'd love to just double it. You know, just <laughs> if you're willing. God, we're just so worried about losing you to TNA that we just got to make sure 
sure you're happy, Mr. Punk. Uh, yeah. Okay. And, and other fantasies and other capitalist fantasies. Um, wow. What a little aside. Okay. So, um, <laughs> Mercedes comes out. She's got her beautiful knight Camille with her. Uh, she's fighting Sheeta. Uh, I loved this match, and I thought this was like the most fun. Like I've liked Mercedes's other matches. Yeah. But the the way she was selling like a character in this match yeah. was the best that I feel like I've seen from oh, her. Yeah. I loved it. I think we've seen it like a, it a number of times to the point where someone somewhere is going to be like, yeah, stupid. It's like a really common trope, but I still, I like <laughs> so much when a, the champ comes into the ring all cocky and it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. just another squash, you know me. And then it's, it's like, <laughs> Oh shit, this is hard. Fuck. <laughs> she got me so running. Much. <laughs> yeah. I totally enjoy Mercedes character. Like in those like heels, what now that she's like clearly heel CEO being over the top and stuff. It's just so fun. And Camille yeah. is so fun with her. Like I love that I love she's got a, a muscle hunk behind her. It's so yeah. good. And it helps to kind of pierce the like Buffy bot of it all, you know, where it's yeah. like, you know, she does all these really practice catchphrases and then you catch her like making a genuine face at, at Camille and you're like, oh, you are a person. It's so sweet. It's like, I already really, like, I really liked Mercedes. I was having fun, but like the, when she got in her Buffy Bot mode, it would be like, oh, Mercedes, you don't have to do this. You can just <laughs> do something else right now. And, but now I feel like I'm getting everything that I want. Every time yeah. I see her with Camille and I think, wow, your beautiful night girlfriend <laughs> Your beautiful protectress who has pledged her fealty to you oh, yeah. and who lay, will mm-hmm. lay down her life for yours. It's yeah. like, I, and then I immediately, I think, and you're the most beautiful princess in the world and you can fight, but you shouldn't have to when she's oh. there to protect you. Yeah. Okay. It's what I like. <laughs> That's it's what perfect. I like. What else are you going to do? Right. Simp, simpy dimpy. <laughs> <laughs> there was a moment in this match where like, Mercy, I think Camille had come up to the apron. I've, and like Mercedes fell into the rate the ropes and made yeah. this face at Camille. Yes. So I was like, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> I just, just I found that so charming. And I was like, you know what? This, this works for me. <laughs> I think it's great. I'm really happy with it. Um, Mercedes did, did she do some like cheating or like, did the, someone distract the ref or there was some so, interference with Camille that kind of like Camille had a kendo stick and no, mm. no, uh, Sheeta, Sheeta had the kendo stick and hit Camille with it. And then oh, Mercedes grabbed the kendo stick out of Sheeta's hand. And then the ref was like, okay, she can use the kendo stick on someone not in the match, but she, you can't use the kendo stick on someone in the match, which I was, like, very proud of myself for me, figuring mm. out what's going on. You really got that, yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you wow. so much. And then something happened from there. And then something <laughs> happened. But anyway, Mercedes won the match. I won't worry too much about that. And um, afterwards, Brit's music hit, and Camille immediately is a guard dog, and is running up the ramp, like, oh, I'm going to get her. I will never <laughs> let her near you. And I'm, like, swooning, like, oh, Camille, protect her. And Camille is looking around for Brit, and she just finds someone in a sting mask at the front of the crowd and pulls them over the barrier and is socking them and laying into them. And then you cut to Brit just walking through the crowd, Unbothered. Uh, unbothered. <laughs> and I don't think we ever cut back to that kayfabe normal fan <laughs> who, j- who just got pulled out of the audience <laughs> and accosted, which I love. It's so it's... funny to think of the kayfabe thing where you're like, I'm such a big Sting fan. I'm going to wear my Sting mask as I, <laughs> as I sit ringside for my favorite promotion. This is the best day of my life. Oh, and Camille is here. She's coming over to me. What, what's going to happen next? I love it. It's I love like, it so much. It's the, that's the uh, the long time, but also just fell off the back of a turnip truck wrestling <laughs> fan. It is a little bit like like the kid who MJF accidentally threw vodka in their face. It's like, I just wouldn't wear be careful around those heels you know <laughs> anything could happen if they're coming towards you you should be scared you should never be happy you should always be scared mm-hmm. you're not gonna like what they do um and then so Britt uh jumped into the ring to try and lockjaw mercedes but camille saved mercedes mwah, mwah. and um manolo said mercedes versus baker is now official for all in it has been for a month no <laughs> i don't think it's it official but i think it was understood <laughs> Well, I thought she challenged her in front of Tony Khan at Comic-Con. Like, 
Yeah. <laughs> Am Did I they the get the graphic? I don't oh, think maybe. they got the whole graphic thing. Fine. So you want know. me to give Manolo credit for this? You no. think I should? No, I will. <laughs> if you say I should, I will. I will. Well, my lover, Good. Manolo. Good work. Oh my God. Good work, wow. Manolo. Now that she's lost Eric Beeston, she's. I know. Manolo's it's like, does lover. he know that you've moved on? <laughs> no, and he never he, will. He never will. <laughs> WWE boyfriend who teaches about WWE? I don't know why every time Eric Beeston comes up, I imagine him ensconced in like an old school, like man cave, like in his armchair. And I imagine you like coming downstairs to be like, Eric, are you having a nice night? And he never is watching his wrestling. And he just says, It's like the Bucks are on my TV again. So no. (laughs) Meanwhile. I have internalized both Eric and Manolo as our the three of ours imaginary friends, and so mm-hmm. I get so startled <laughs> yeah. when someone like brings a tweet from Eric Beeston yeah. in, or like someone mentions Manolo. Someone in the social suplex Discord is always like, "Manolo's re- recaps are the only thing that's good about cage side seats," and I'm like, "You know him? <laughs> you know, like you're, you can read those." <laughs> um. All right anything else we want to say about this match i had a really nice time Mm -hmm. and i'm so happy i think that segment has made this clear uh any thoughts on the brit mercedes build it's no i mean they're doing a good job yeah it's been good like not great but good yeah so like medium yeah medium medium fine good if, yeah. What's weird is that I'm like, well, it's like a fairly normal build, which I guess is strange for AW lately. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, this is this is usually how build builds. They're kind of hitting just that all they the don't normal really beats. Do that yeah. Anymore. <laughs> right. yeah. Um. Yeah. I think it's been, a, as I like to say, perfectly serviceable. <laughs> so n- no real complaints. I will be more than happy to see them fight. It was nice to see Sheeta again. Very Yet nice, again, yeah. wearing a costume that I can't entirely endorse, <laughs> but I love her so much. I love her so much, and I've never loved a, maybe a single, what are they called? Costume. It's not costume. Gear. 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 I've never it's, loved any of her gear. It's yeah, so she's so beautiful, funny. and she always wears something so weird. <laughs> It's so funny for her thing to be like, I'm a giant hunk with amazing charisma and perfect uh, wrestling skills, and I will never be dressed normally. Like, I'm <laughs> terrible fashion based. No. I think, uh, yeah, it's, 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 I think it's quite a sweet character note. Once you internalize it as a purposeful character note, you're like, that's great. <laughs> I've never liked the gear, and I never will. I love you, Sheeta. Um, <laughs> Let's move on to, should we move on to the men? Should we talk about them? We have to. We have no choice but to talk about the men. Um, <laughs> Danielson and Swerve. Danielson and Swerve. Well, so this week on Twitter, Tony Khan hopped on to tell us to get really, 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 really excited because <laughs> Brian Danielson literally could be about to, guys, he could literally be about to retire. This could be the end of one of the greatest careers of all time. And... <laughs> Tony made a little present for him. <laughs> and what was the present? <laughs> it was a little career retrospective set two green days at the time of your life. The only Song. way it could have been more pathetic is if it was to uh, I Will Remember You instead. <laughs> oh, that's really right. I feel oh like that God. would be, be really be writer. Yeah. In his Just heart, everybody. Tony wanted to do like a Sarah McLachlan I Will Remember You where he's like, it's pictures of him and Brian Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the video. I went back and rewatched it, and there is he? he's he's in there hugging Brian Daniels at one point in Gorilla. <laughs> this was so funny. It was so funny that he promoted it ahead of time. It was like, and he he was like, "We got it. Green Day. We got hey, we got the. We got you're gonna want to see this fan vid. You're gonna want to see it. You're gonna want to see our Green Day fan vid." <laughs> and then it was. I mean, I'm like around the same age as these guys, and it is like. Yeah, there were a lot of, like, end of high school videos set to the song, for sure. I mean, it does look like Brian Danielson's graduating, but he's yeah. not even retiring. No. We all know, I think that's the thing that's, you only, you only merely can laugh at this point. It's yeah. like, 
Nobody thinks Brian Danielson is retiring. <laughs> Nobody thinks that. Like it, TK's vibe is like where it's make believe and anything could happen and something crazy could happen. He could never come back, and it's like that won't happen. <laughs> Tony, I I didn't just fall off the back of a turnip truck. <laughs> It's so funny, too, because, like, Sting's retirement video, like, I felt genuinely very emotional, oh, even though too. I had not seen most of it. But um, with Daniel, it was, like, between the... And it was, like, a pretty good vid watching yeah. it, but it was just, like, like he's just going down to, like, halftime? Like, right. wh- what are we doing here? He's not that's, dying. That's the thing. The Sting vid was, almost, like, directly before the match that we knew was his last match. So yeah. it did feel very, like, very meaningful this one i'm like you're just fucking with me you're trying yeah. like this is this is manipulative yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it didn't even work no anyway no, it made me a little crazy because i was like listen if you want to if we're going to start airing fan vids the <laughs> bucks had their 20 year anniversary you could have played the you could have yes. made for me yeah. you could have played the beautiful video that you i made you could have mm-hmm. played, played roller coaster yeah, people would have there. had emotions to that one. Oh, this you're one... not willing to pay the Jonas Brothers the same <laughs> way that you pay Green Day? <laughs> yes, I do think it might be better to give Green Day money than to give the Jonas Brothers money. But... <laughs> I mean, when you put it that way. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, but... <laughs> when you follow the equation to its natural conclusion, <laughs> at the same time, just give Joe the money. Give Joe Jonas the money and play my vid on TV. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, all right. Oh, okay, so then... Danielson was on the in the on the sidelines in the crowd while Swerve and Yuta fought in the main event. Danielson tried his hand. Now, guys, he's never done it before. Okay, <laughs> so he really he really tried to do some face acting. What'd you think? He did. It wasn't amazing, but it was there for sure. Yeah, yeah. it was. Hey, listen for somebody's first time at it. For somebody's. <laughs> debut he's barely been in the business for a month hey that's the best in the world that's that's the other that's the other guy what is the greatest of all time i don't know i'm girl i don't know he's neither he's not honestly it's so hard to tell these roh men apart you know it's just like can't keep track of it it's just man face beard blood (laughs) any I just see 2005 <laughs> live journal and I'm like, okay. Okay. Someone write that down for a t-shirt, t-shirt idea. <laughs> Man face, beard, butt. <laughs> Man hey, door, hand, wrestling. car, hook, door. <laughs> what goes into good wrestling? Yeah, I know. I know the four things that go into good wrestling. <laughs> I even say man, man hair beard, beard. Man, man hair face beard. man face man. beard butt yeah <laughs> so we got one of these new guys came out he's a classic man face beard butt uh okay <laughs> i thought this was funny we'd had well and i think you should say this because you said it best we had nice time which made it better yeah, I really, I this whole thing, you know, I was like, I felt so much warmer towards the Swerve Danielson storyline because I had a, a great time in the rest of Dynamite. And it's just like, yeah, like, this has been bad build. It is for the main event, so that's bad. And it's not selling Wembley tickets, so that's bad. But, like, honestly, like, a lot of wrestling storylines are bad, and I have a pretty high tolerance for it as long as, like, the bulk of the show is is good. So I was very, like, oh, like, there he is face acting. It's not... You know, it's not doing a lot, but it's doing something. It's not nothing. So, you know, I just felt warm. Yeah, I don't think he... I don't really know what he wanted to communicate. What I thought he communicated, which I said to some, was that he was at his child's soccer game and slowly getting tenser and tenser because he was disappointed in his child in a way (laughs) where he was going to try not to show it, but Yuda was going to be in the backseat of the car the whole way home being like, my dad would love me more if I could play soccer. <laughs> and that's what I thought he was giving. And I thought, I don't think that's what he means to be giving. I think he may mean to be communicating that he's worried for Yuda's health and well-being. But I thought that my narrative was richer. No, I think that's right. And I, somebody, God, I wish I could think of who it was, was like the whole point of doing a match like that is that like, like Yuda gets dangerously like hurt so that like you get to have Brian Danielson uh be like oh my god my son the way like, <laughs> Osprey cradled Kyle 
<laughs> yeah, which which he did in the Twitter promo, but that was not on that, the air. Yeah. I haven't seen it yeah. even. I know that's the bad match, behavior for a podcaster, but the match itself, it was just like Yuna did a great job of wrestling, and he tried his very best, and Brian Danielson was just tense. Said he's never going to go to the major leagues. I guess I just always thought I had a son who would. <laughs> I guess I thought that my son would do some things that I was never able to do, but I'm starting to realize that he won't. <laughs> he did also, to be fair, he did do some glaring at Swerve at the at the start, which um, was it was nice that he saw that Swerve was there. That's you know. Yes, he recognized Swerve's presence. Um, He did jump into the ring to save Yuta from uh, Swerve was beating him up after he won. And uh, Swerve hit the ramp and uh, cut another. I mean, it was really good glowering promo where he was like, Brian, I hope your family is going to come to all in. And I hope they get to see when I fucking kill you. I hope they watch. (laughs) I hope your family watches me murder you live on (laughs) TV, PPV. And um, Brian then was, like, bending to check on Yuta, which, again, it's, like, amazing that you re- remembered you have a son. You did abandon, yeah. you've abandoned him for years. I mean, it's like you just walked back into his life. He's 18. <laughs> he's at college. He doesn't need you anymore. But it fine. Is, the, the vibe is a little bit, Bri- like, Brian's like, yeah, and then I'm going to watch you know, Wheeler match about <laughs> Russell and someone's like, Wheeler? And he's like, yeah, that's him. Yeah, my son. <laughs> my son. Um, and then uh, Swerve uh, shimmied on back to the ring and he uh, house called Brian Danielson. He kicked him and he kicked him and he was really, really mean about it. And then he did one of the most powerful things I feel like I've seen in quite some time on wrestling where everyone was having so fun and having so fun. <laughs> Everyone was having so much fun in the crowd doing Brian Danielson's yes chant, and then Swerve just really slowly raised his arms in a really mocking, like, yes. <laughs> and the crowd's energy, it genuinely, to me, it was like puppet master behavior, where he was like, I can make you do anything. I know you know this isn't nice, and you shouldn't do it, but you're going to. And the crowd was like, <laughs> it's not nice, and we shouldn't do it, but we're going to. <laughs> I was actually quite impressed uh, the whole way through that match. I was like, wow, he has, he has the crowd. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They it's want in- Danielson dead. <laughs> 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 they want that old man obliterated. <laughs> I was having the thought this week listening. I think I, forget, I, think I was listening to One Nation Radio and had the thought that, like, do you remember when, like, <laughs> Swerve Hangman and Joe were, like, feuding and, like, it kept being like you'd forget that Joe was in the ring because (laughs) Swerve and Hangman only had their eyes for each other. It's like we're doing that again, except the parts of Swerve and Hangman are being played by Brian Danielson (laughs) and Jeff Jarrett. (laughs) And and instead of... Take their eyes off each other, yeah. Instead of forgetting that, like, he's in the ring, Swerve is instead having his own other compelling feud and just completely ignoring it. And I'm like, that would have been so funny if that happened with Joe, where Joe was like, all right, enough about that. Hey, I'm going to have my own, like, run my own feud over here. <laughs> Absolutely. It's crazy. Yeah. It it has been making me wonder. It's like, so do Danielson and Tony Khan, like, are they just thinking of this as, like, the storyline is Danielson's retirement and, like, like, Swerve's not involved? Like, because it is like he's doing, like, a so, like less so this week, at least. But um, up to this point, it's just, like... You guys know he has an opponent, right? <laughs> I think I it's it's interesting because it's like um, Danielson did more this week, but at the same time, as you've said, he didn't do anything that really said like I care about who my opponent is, mm-hmm. and he didn't even really do anything that was like I care about the belt. Even though not to get insider baseball on our dumb girls podcast, but uh, I know that like. Uh, Dave was on the Observer uh, no, what do they call it when they talk? Wrestling (laughs) Observer (laughs) Network (laughs) you know when they do the radio, when they do their wrestling radio, Uh, that Dave was like, no, Danielson um, like did give that interview saying that he didn't want the belt but that was shoot, but in kayfabe he does want the belt, and it's like not that he has showed me I haven't (laughs) really seen any evidence of that and I know that like And again, I haven't seen the promo he did online afterwards. I'm sorry. But I just think that if 
Brian Danielson this whole time has been like, this is the storyline I'm doing. It's that I may ha- be forced to retire, but then I won't. I w- instead will continue to wrestle. And he thinks that's a really good storyline. It's not. It's a really selfish storyline mm-hmm. to me. Like, I just actually felt, I don't know, I got kind of emotional about it last night where I'm like, that's so shitty. This is like the, this is like your, the big, like, flagship pay-per-view with the most people and, like, mm-hmm. Swerve has done a lot of, like, really good work in this yeah. reign. I think, and you mentioned this last week, that it's like we've really seen him. He already was great at talking and, like, mm-hmm. his um, whole, what am I trying to say? His whole deal? Whatever. Anyway, but it's like he's, he's like, beefed up his whole mm-hmm. deal. Like, he's better at yeah. everything that he was already good at. And he's worked really hard, and he hasn't really gotten any, like, good feuds except yeah. for hangman who was out for a lot of it and brian danielson is going to take the belt off him it like really seems like that's what's going to happen and none of it is about him and brian danielson hasn't like acknowledged him literally yeah. once yeah. like it kind of yeah. blows it's like yeah, really it's a bummer it's a fucking it, bummer it's crazy too because i think what part of what Dave said was like Brian Danielson out of kayfabe, like doesn't want a belt. And he was like, he's never wanted a belt. He just wants to put young guys over, but in kayfabe, he doesn't. He's like, well, he's extremely not putting Swerve over because no. he's not helping him at all. He's, he's dead weight. And Swerve is like dragging his mm-hmm. limp body up a mountain, you know? I mean, I guess and, you build muscles that way, but yeah. at what cost? <laughs> I mean, so in that way, he is hauled. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Danielson just really zen, getting hauled up the mountain is like, this is good for you. This is really good for you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I really buy that, like, you know. I mean, I I do think that Brian Danielson is a very nice person. Like, I'm not trying to cast no, yeah, whatever. I but I am sort of like, oh, you want to put young guys over? then why wasn't Yuta in anything you did in the last month? He probably would have really benefited. If you had yeah. dragged him into that, it really yeah. would have benefited. I get that it's complicated with Dana Garcia because he's like, Tony's not trying to push people who aren't signed, but like, you, Yuta, yeah. you could be here. Leah, yeah. if while you have Tony's card, could you just throw Garcia in the no, card? Hey, I'll find him a tag team. Bar- maybe I'll make him a tag partner with Yuda, and then he'll fit in my theme. I'm gonna say, maybe I'll make him a special tag team partner. <laughs> maybe I'll create a man. Hey, I'll, I'll take him speed dating. <laughs> maybe I'll just go to the Build a Bear for wrestlers, and I'll put together such a nice man for him to have as a tag team partner. <laughs> Yeah, and this was when we're two were like watching Swerve and Yuta. I was like, I had such a good time in the match. They were both so much fun. I liked both of them a lot. And I was like, why haven't, why hasn't Swerve been wrestling like all, you know, Claudio also? Like, we could have been doing this these last few weeks yeah. instead of like all this Jeff Jarrett stuff that, yeah. was, like, we're it putting Jeff been, Jarrett so, over. Right. Not a young guy. Mm, doesn't, right. So right. Doesn't it would have it would have made, it would have made the whole summer so much more enjoyable if all of the insanity we saw with Jeff Jarrett was taking place with, like, even if Mox is unavailable, like Claudio, yeah. I would right. have more fun. Please. Guys, it's not Jeff Jarrett's fault that he pops the demo. <laughs> <laughs> he can't Everyone help knows it. it. Everyone's looked at the numbers yeah. all the time. And- and we are citing our friend Trish from Trish and Sarah on that. <laughs> she yeah. said explicitly, she said no one has ever popped a demo the way that just Jarrett has. <laughs> she said he brings the money. He brings the money in. Tony is, is has no choice but to get him on screen. Every I'm sorry, Jeff Jarrett. It's really not your fault, and I'm not it's... mad at you, but it's crazy, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at someone. I, you'll have to guess who, but his name starts with a T and it ends with an N at the other end of the last name. <laughs> <laughs> Should we bleep that? Next yeah. Oh, that's right. Away? Please, please bleep that. I don't want people to know. <laughs> we can't um, give our secret biases away. Oh my god. Um, speaking of Jeff Jarrett, maybe we just do a little quick check in. Hangman uh, was fighting Jay Lethal this week because of Jeff Jarrett, uh, kind of. <laughs> I think and. Um, Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett and Sanjay Dutt were having a backstage interview with Renee, which actually was pretty funny and reinforced for me. Leah, I think you said this a couple of weeks ago. You were like, I had really started to kind of just like like those guys accidentally yeah. as a, mm-hmm. a faction. And I was like, 
Yeah, I do like them as a faction. I just wish that Jeff Jarrett wasn't at the top of the card every week right now. <laughs> Uh, but Hengen interrupted that to start uh, wailing on Jay Lethal, and then that went into their match, and they did the match. He wailed on him, and he did win the match. Is there anything else that happened there that's pertinent? I think Jay, was, did Jay Lethal say in this promo, he was like, hang, it was like, Hangman, your obsession with Swerve <laughs> is, like, yeah. it was basically like ruining our lives backstage. <laughs> I forget exactly yeah. what he said, but it, the <laughs> implication was very like, we are all sick and tired of you <laughs> walking around destroying things because you're so bad at Swerve. You're right. And that was incredibly funny. And it was so fun to think again about the rich backstage atmosphere where it's like hangman is just on a rampage every damn week being like <laughs> oh i'm I gotta get my hands on that guy and everyone else is being like please stop uh, stomping around this way people are trying to eat you keep knocking stuff out of our hands like we can't live this way it's not it's not demure as they would like, say on tiktok the energy you're bringing is really stressing us all out man <laughs> if you keep breaking tables we're not gonna have anywhere to sit <laughs> The other absolutely perfect moment in this match was Hangman did this whole hammy theatrical thing where he bit his lip and then he was like, like really being like, oh, oh my God, is he going to start bleeding? It's going to be, oh my God, that'd be crazy. And so he's doing a little bit of ham stuff with that. And I think it was Excalibur. It might've been Tony Schiavone was like, you know, he might've slipped his, slit his lip. And if he tastes blood, maybe. He'll start thinking about, and then he like weirdly trailed off and was like, "Well, anyway." And then like, I was like, "I'm sorry. Are you suggesting that it might be a liability in the middle of this match for him to taste blood and think of the last person who bled into his mouth, and then he'll just lose the match because he'll be so oh my mad?" God. Okay, Richard Sykin over there on commentary. <laughs> Just Stop. everyone backstage being like, those two, I mean, the taste of blood in his mouth, it's definitely reminded him oh of some God. stuff. <laughs> you know, I love every now and then, it's like you'll be listening to someone in wrestling, like, hear the moment where they say something like, wow, is that what we do? Is that what we sound like? And it's like every damn week, every damn week. Some of you know it, but some of you only know it sometimes. <laughs> um... Okay, I think that's all. We don't, and we don't know what Hangman is going to do at uh, Wembley, do we? Officially. But we... He's, it's, he's, there's rumors of the gauntlet, and I think there's rumors of him and Jeff Jarrett having a single smash. Yes, so. well, I know how badly he wants to get those mitts of his on Jeff Jarrett's <laughs> hunked out body. <laughs> beef boy, beef, beef boy Jarrett. Maybe it is kind of it. crazy that they haven't announced some matches for Wembley it's, yet. It's like it's nine nine days out here, so I'd lock him down. But that's just that's me. Just me. <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. <laughs> so maybe Tony, what if we just threw that in the cart, just with the other stuff? He's like, you can't buy Wembley matches. Money cannot buy you a Wembley match. We're like, well, what if it could? What if it was on the website? Hey, Tony, what about does a what if a Wembley match could buy you money? What if it goes the other oh, way? Actually, oh my god! Mm. And we could get kind of a the money don't come out, it go in because you put the when you put the right match in the cart, you get a, a discount that you wouldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> this is how Donald Trump sounds every single week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a like. I did like Emmy, <laughs> Emmy saying that you girls, uh, we're going to have to start learning how to say the electric atmosphere of global life. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we, we're going to have to come up with something. I mean, to be fair, actually, we should be really transparent about this. Manolo came up with the electric atmosphere. <laughs> I would never want to take that from him. It's the funniest thing he's ever said. And that's really <laughs> saying something. Um, and I think he fished his wish because I think he did want to see the Acclaim versus the Bucks in the electric atmosphere of Wembley Stadium. So <laughs> oh, he did. That's right. And I scoffed wow. at the time. I was like, that could never be what would happen in the electric <laughs> atmosphere of Wembley Stadium. But oh, how the egg is dripping down my face. Well, it's like we're in a place where it's like, please, for the love of God, give me the Acclaim versus yeah. the Bucks. Because yeah. if FTR are there, I'm going to KMS. Yeah. It's real hard. fucking over for me. Um... Well, I think we've got to move on because time can only time only can tell. 
what will happen with the man hangman. <laughs> Does that sound right? <laughs> but did I miss anything that you wanted to say about him? Mm-hmm. Looked good. He really looked hungry. Good. Guy. Still loving guy. that Flavor Town gear. Absolutely love mm. the Flavor Town gear. I, he could take me there any day on a motorcycle, <laughs> on a motorbike. Um, speaking of the Bucks and FT, no claim, FT claimed. Spe- <laughs> I mean, speaking much. of the Bucks and FT claimed, um, <laughs> the Bucks fought the acclaimed on Dynamite this week, and FTR interrupted, uh, causing the Bucks to win uh, via DQ. The acclaimed were really mad at FTR. Now, I don't actually remember why this happened. Why did the FTR burst in? What did the Bucks ever do to them? Uh, Matt had the belt, and he was gonna, he was gonna do a cheating with it. Oh, but that's his right. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> FTR, don't make everything your business. Sometimes, like it's like, mm. I also think just like, let people be. How can you be mad <laughs> at Matt? Sometimes when Matt has the belt and he's like fronting people with it, his vibe is very much like an old lady about to hit somebody with their purse. <laughs> 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 which you should always allow to happen. Oh, yeah, so. And shouldn't FTR want the acclaim to get taken out by the belt? Like, then they'd get to go to Wembley, right? So Yeah, and so. they... Oh, no, maybe that's... They don't want... <laughs> what do they want? Now, what do so FTR want? So hard to want? say what FTR well, ever wants. If they were... If, if they had normal thought processes, then, yeah, Ant's right. If the acclaimed Thank lost... You so much. Then potentially, like FTR would be the actual, like number one contenders who would get the title shot at Wembley. But There's no valor seem... in winning the titles off of the acclaimed. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I'm sorry, Anthony Bowens. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> no apology to Max Caster, though. <laughs> well, he did look really cute this week, and he hasn't said yeah. anything uh, offensive in a while, so he could be making a comeback. He is making I mean, a comeback. He is... The thing about Max Caster at the end of the day is he is one of the m- most beautiful men. It's crazy, actually. Yeah. You'll ever see. I feel yeah. like I've seen like multiple men being like, Max Caster's mustache is so silly. And I was like, no, mm-hmm. Max Caster. Yeah, <laughs> it, it looks really good. <laughs> None of, we're not always happy to say it because he's so often saying things that make mm-hmm. you have to keep these thoughts private. Like, I can't tell anyone <laughs> that I think these things... But then when he's not saying those things, it's easy mm. to come out and say, hubba hubba. Okay, yeah. mister. Yeah. Yes, yeah. please. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Break me off a piece of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I think we got what like were a we sentence talking about? into yes. the recap. Well, it, don't, just don't, just be, be nice about it. But I will invite people, if you want to tell us what... Do you think what the FTR thought process was? You can tell us, but don't be mean. Be nice, okay? <laughs> Afterwards, the acclaimed were really mad at FTR because I guess they were like, we were going to win, which you weren't. <laughs> and FTR seemed mad at the acclaimed. And backstage, Vice Principal Christopher Daniels' brow furrowed is watching on the monitor. and He, he was just... wearing such a vice principal outfit mm-hmm. like the button down and renee was wearing that flowered dress which was i really liked it renee but she also did look like she might also be a she's vice your principal. she's she's your prettiest english teacher maybe yeah like you're just like wow i love mm-hmm. being miss Re- in miss paquette's class yeah, yeah. she's the best yeah. <laughs> um and he just looked so worried and it's like he lo- it looked kind of like he was reviewing the tape like a uh, um, food fight had broken out in the cafeteria and he's trying to figure out who he can blame because depending on who he blames prom might get cancelled yeah. and he j- isn't but he isn't sure because it's not on the tape so he's like well, what am I gonna <laughs> do I don't know if they get to have prom or not <laughs> and for, he says the issue is um, that who is the number one contender who will fight the Bucks at Wembley and they're gonna solve it by FTR and the acclaimed fighting on collision this week and the winner of that match will fight the bucks at wembley and what do you think will happen girls 
Yes, that's it's so true. <laughs> one of these, like, well, so best case scenario, the acclaimed win, but probably it's a three way, and I hate it. So yeah. and worst case scenario, FDR and actually win. And actually in that win. in that case, we take to we take to the streets. Ugh. We throw our TVs out the window. We can't be doing that again. Not again. You can't do that. You cannot do that to cannot us. do that to me again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't. I don't. I just don't think I can bear it if I have to watch no. that no. again. It's it's <laughs> repulsive. <laughs> just watching D. this match on Dynamite, I was like, I had such a good time. I was like, wow, to watch the Bucks fight someone who's not FTR, it's like a, it's a dream. It's a beautiful dream. I was having so much fun. Felt so fond of the acclaimed. Yeah, I it was agreed. a really good match. Yeah. Well, should we talk about some of the the scuttlebutt in the community this week. What did Brian Alvarez say? That uh, the previous love of my life and now my least favorite person in the world, Barry Bloom, uh, apparently (laughs) negotiated as part of (laughs) the Bucks' contracts that they have limited dates and that either Tony has used them up already, which if so, fuck you, or Mm -mm. he doesn't. He doesn't want to use them, which I don't think the people were. We might want to I mean, save them for something. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, please spend it. What did we big money if he goes over? What did we just say to you, Tony? Did we not say that the bucks are not made to be a crumb? Right. <laughs> did we not say that the bucks are not made? We don't save them for a special occasion. We use them every week, and when we sign them to a beautiful big contract that they deserve, we ask ourselves, oh, okay, if they get extra money for extra dates. Have I, have I, am I prepared to pay so that they can wrestle on every single show this year? And you should be. And I'm afraid that's got to go in the budget. We're putting (laughs) it in the cart. We're paying for it with the Platinum Amex. Okay. Mm -hmm. We pay, we pay our young bucks and we pay pay them well. Yes. That's all. I mean, that's all. I can't not be seeing the young bucks and having to listen to the community complain about the Young Bucks not coming to work and listen to Darby <laughs> Allen complain about the Young Bucks not coming to work because, Tony, you are too cheap to pay the Young Bucks what they, what they deserve and what Barry Bloom negotiated for them. So pay Crazy. the men. And even with this limited dates thing, why am I not seeing Jungle Boy? Why am I not seeing Okada? Yes. yes. What's why going not? on? Why am I not seeing these men? If the problem is the gimmick, then the gimmick's got to go. Gimmick's okay, gotta go. I've had my fun with the gimmick. We have been proponents of the gimmick from day one. We have celebrated its successes. We have wept over its inadequacies in the past <laughs> few weeks of not seeing the men. We must see the men. We must if see the, the gimmick men. is the problem, the gimmick's got to go. I think we can all agree. New gimmick, less shirts. New, <laughs> new, n- nude gimmick. New sexy nude gimmick. Send nudes. Send nude young bucks to ring. Send nude bucks. Yeah. Tony, t- Tony opening the mail this week. To that <laughs> it's not what it's I like, wanted. I wanted a plaque. You know what? You can have a plaque that's. You can have a special plaque that I'm inventing called "Booked Young Bucks Good Two Months Straight." Wow! If you do it, you wow, can get a shoot for. Her. You yeah. can get a really nice plaque. And I'm. If you do uh, it, yeah. Tony. I'll make the plaque myself. I will craft mm. it with my arts wow. and crafts materials. Wow. Booked Young Bucks good. Two months straight. It's got to wow. be for two months straight. No mistakes. God. One mistake, really... we start over. <laughs> <in> two months. <laughs> We're going to start keeping a little tracker. It has been X days of good Young Bucks booking. Just reset it whenever we have a week like last week. <laughs> We you don't know, see just, the bucks. You don't get another day of booking. You, you, you know, don't you get. That. We go back to zero. We listen. We all want it to be two hundred days of amazing young bucks booking, but the journey of a million miles begins with a single step. <laughs> <laughs> One mere <laughs> week of good booking. <laughs> and this, this was, this was a good. This, this, this aside was from the FDR stuff, you, I mean, it's, you're dicey there. But we saw them. They wrestled. They did a great job. They did what they always do, which is it's like you haven't seen him in a million years, and they come out, and Matt Jackson sticks his little tongue out like, eh, I'm a bad boy. And the crowd just goes all limp and goo goo gaga. The crowd is just like, oh, we just do exactly what you say. We're supposed to, oh, you want us to, to boo you? We'll boo you. We love watching the Young Bucks. Me too. 
Yeah. It w- was really funny for like the whole uh, community to be, be like, the young bucks are cold. The young bucks are cold. They're just cold and they're stale. And it's like, they get out there and it's like, give them a couple minutes. They got they're fine. <laughs> I, it's honestly, it is g- genuinely, they have an extremely impressive grasp of crowd control uh, that it's like, there aren't that many other wrestlers that we see regularly that I'm like, wow, whatever. It's like Christian. Christian also is like this. It's like whatever you want the crowd to do, they do it. You just make them do it by being really good at your job. That's yeah. amazing. Oh, and Swerve now with the, Swerve now. With the yep. yes. Yeah. Wow. But that's a development we've seen. We've witnessed we've happening. We've seen I think. that. Yes. And you know how we got there? By dragging Brian Danielson's <laughs> limp body up. <laughs> Just those dead weight lifts, yeah. <laughs> Brian Danielson, arms folded across his chest. He says, this is for your own good. <laughs> Swerves Don't doing push-ups with a limp Brian Danielson on his back. Brian being like, you're welcome, buddy. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, Lord in heaven. Um, what else? Anything else to say about this? Was Dax wearing a crop top? Didn't it seem like a weird length? It wasn't like cropped, it but did. it wasn't a normal length either. Yeah. Kind of seemed like he forgot a shirt and he had to borrow one. If it was somebody else, I would think it was a crop top and I'd think, ooh, that's fun. But with Dax, you're just like, pack your wife's shirt, buddy. He was in a strange middle ground. Uh, Billy Gunn also present. You want to say anything about it? Strange. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't have involved him, but it's fine. I it's been nice with the claim to going back to tags instead of trios, but uh, I feel like we could put Billy Gunn, you know, to bed while we're doing that. I did laugh at that one little segment where, like, Matt, like, was rounding the corner of the um, ring and saw Billy Gunn and started backing up and was like, "Oh, not fucking with you, not fucking with you." And then he turned the corner and Max Caster was standing there and then he was like, "Oh no, I'm caught." between you know, <laughs> two equally horrifying situations. And I was like, don't. Let's be real. <laughs> I think I was a really gun. It's like, you'll be fine there. I would go with that. I, I would go for Max Caster if it was me. And the Nick spot was, the Nick spot was funny. But it's like, did we, did we need it? I would say no. I guess I don't think, I don't know that I think Billy Gunn had to be there. No. I don't think it was very additive, you know. No. But I guess that's just our opinion. I wish uh, uh, I wish Anthony Bowens' twink boyfriend instead was like mm. following them around the ring. Oh, that'd be fun. Okay, that's fun. <laughs> get her, get her, get her in the booking chair. Um. Okay. Anything else about uh? No. Let's move on to conglomeration and on and on and on and on. I thought it was a good one. I'm every week. I'm innovating. Uh, Kyle, Roddy, and Orange Cassidy had a um, three way match for the number one contendership for the Casino Gauntlet match. Does that mean you come out last? Yes. Yeah. I, Which, well, why like, would I, I want... Don't, I don't want that. I don't why want would that I want no. my son to win that and he comes out last? I want to see my son for the maximum time possible. I, I don't even care. I, I, it's fine if he loses. He should be on screen for as long as possible. <laughs> that's the real That's the real competition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He should come out first. <laughs> he should stay till the end. Um, OC was back in uh, his black t-shirt goth boy mode. Very good sign in the crowd. Mm, goth mode. Yeah. Goth mode. Loved it. Um, every other member of the United Kingdom and Ishii and Mark Briscoe ran out at one point. We've seen them every week. It's no every no week. insult to the men, but we've seen you every week. And now. not just seen them. We've seen them doing the identical things every yes, week. Yes, the just same. Just like a little ritualistic. Oh, here's the ring. Ah, uh, here they are. Now, ah, uh, it must be 9.15. Here they are. <laughs> um, can either of you explain the ending of this match that I, I didn't really understand what Manolo said? I can't. I think that what Manolo said and you listening on your walk, you may be like, "Will you watch the show?" <laughs> I don't. I don't know what I saw. Okay, <laughs> I think that Manolo said that the way the match ended was that OC like shoved Kyle O'Reilly out of the way and took Roddy's knee or something. Roddy's high knee, like his cool, really powerful high knee. Um, so he thought he was saving Kyle, but then he turned the the knee into a sneaky roll up or something and so he ended up winning the match but even though so he's trying to be, be nice to Kyle but Kyle was 
really upset about losing mm-hmm. the match and he was beating the mat and just like really mad and then he kind of brushed it aside and said okay congratulations Orange Cassidy but you thought there is a darkness in him <laughs> there yeah. and so he thought he'd won earlier because uh, OC got mm. double pinned by Roddy and Kyle at the same time <laughs> so oh. but that's against the rules that's that's not that doesn't count you can't win with a double pin but mm-hmm. you can have a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> Many are saying. Mm. Um, So Kyle is on the, maybe on the verge of a nervous breakdown. And do you think that he is? I'd like him to hit that stage. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to see him melt down. Yeah. I'm ready to see really any movement from these guys (laughs) in terms of what they're doing. I'd love to see something progress in some direction. We got to go somewhere with it. Um, I think our friend Mary did say, and this is a good point, and I had been saying, like, throughout the match, I was like, I got to see Kyle heel turn. I got to see him turn on Orange Cassidy. I would love to watch him and Roddy murder Orange Cassidy and leave him crying for the, alone with the worst year of his life, and they just go off and do their dumb shit. And Mary was like, well, the thing is that um, Kyle likes Mark Briscoe so much (laughs) that it's just not believable at this point that he (laughs) would turn on Mark Briscoe for Roderick Strong. And I said to myself, that is true. That is true. And I don't know what to do about that. Is that what Mary said? Did I make that up that she said that? Yeah, no, she said that. She said that, that, like, because in ROH, like, Roddy and Kyle were always together, people are always, like... Booking them to get back together. Yeah. 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 For some reason, everybody today, like I just saw it very strongly and from a lot of people being like, Kyle O'Reilly is a, is another one of the ROH crew. He's an ROH guy. He's from ROH. All of a sudden, like, I know he was on ROH, but I feel like up until today, everyone was like calling him an X NXT. Yeah. Like all of a sudden today, everyone was like, well, when you think of Kyle O'Reilly, the first thing you think of is ROH. I was like, when did we decide that today? <laughs> yeah, I would not have. I would not have associated him with ROH. Um, Maybe Roddy's leaking it so that he'll get a push from Tony. <laughs> He's like, you know what? People really think of me from is ROH. It's ROH. Much. Me and Kyle. <laughs> um, something's got to. Something's got to give here. Okay. Yeah. Whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. Now are and they? I would, oh, go. I would like it to progress Orange Cassidy's little emotional breakdown I too, because he really is like he's he's sad and he's rage filled. Like his shitty kicks went into furious kicks. Oh really yeah, fast that was this time. he did some great stuff in that match. He was mad. Yeah. So let's juice it up. I mean, no every time we complain about this storyline not going anywhere, I like. OC is doing the work every single week. He yeah, is playing he is. his character every single week. I have no complaints about and what he's up to. I am watching a man slowly get pushed to the brink of madness by his own misery. Been there, buddy. <laughs> um, he's really not the problem. The problem is just when this, it's the same match every week. It's just, yeah. Same, every, same match. Every same week. match with the, with the same promo and the same run out. Yeah. Same promo, same, same run out. Yeah. Um, but the, all these men are going to be in the gauntlet. I don't think they've announced. The, really when you look, well, when you look at cage match, even now, it just says Orange Cassidy is the only announced person in the gauntlet. Mm. I'm, I'm not looking forward it's to the so gauntlet that minute. much because I think that's where everyone thinks that Tony is going to debut all his many bought that we don't want, where he's <laughs> going to debut the men that we didn't put in the cart. Those, those weren't even on our wish list. <laughs> it's so funny that he's like, Tony's like, Hi guys, I'm back from the store, and we're like, "Did you get us Motor, Motor City machine guns? Did you did you pay for the Lucha Brothers?" And he's like, "No, I got Ricochet." And we're like, "Get out! Get out!" This is oh like, no, I got um, Bobby Lashley. I don't know who that is. I don't want to meet him. I don't want him, Tony. This is like when my best friend, when her son was like four, he finally got old enough so that the, the like Google home, like could understand what he was saying. And he, and his, his parents would put stuff on the grocery list via that. So he discovered he could put stuff on the grocery list. So they were like, yeah, we'd open up the grocery list and it would be like, you know, like bread, milk, eggs. And then it'd be like graham crackers, graham crackers, graham crackers, like over and over. 
And then, but he didn't realize that they like look at the grocery list before they like put in the grocery order. He thought it just went straight to the store. So like the groceries would arrive and he'd like run to the, to the bags and then be really disappointed. Um, And that's us with Tony Khan right now. We're like, He's reading down the list. He's like, "Motor City Machine Guns, Motor City Machine Guns, Motor City Machine Guns." He's like, like "What do they crazy. think I made of money?" <laughs> He's taking them off the list, and then we run up to the bags and we're like, "Bobby Lashley." We're like, "Well, but it looks like it looks like you picked up some treats for yourself. It looks like you picked up some adult treats for yourself. <laughs> this you is only anything adult for your treats. girl. <laughs> no ice cream for girls. Just vodka for grownups." <laughs> <laughs> I see we got a nice six pack of weed seltzers, but no ice cream for girls. <laughs> I just wanted a little graham cracker to make my life a little bit better, but no. Jesus, just put him in the car. Just pay, pay him the money. Pay them, pay them the money. Pay the tag teams the money. As I said earlier. I don't. I feel sick when I see only two men in the ring. I want to see four <laughs> men in the ring, and I want them to be well-paid men. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's all I want. I just want a thriving <laughs> tag team division. Four healthy and good-looking <laughs> men in. <laughs> I four want men them who to... can afford any kind of beauty treatments they need. Beard, face, <laughs> b- body, butt. Four. <laughs> well moisturized men. <laughs> We don't ask for much. <laughs> oh, you can put six in there too. You can have four, or you can have six, and you can get special dispensation for some matches with two men. But I need to see the men ahead of time, and you <laughs> cannot swap them out at the last minute just because I'm not a gorilla. <laughs> now those will be limited dates. <laughs> be very limited two men matches. <laughs> I want you to think of a two-man match as a really special treat, a rare special <laughs> and, treat. And the thing is that, like, it's like you're gonna have to convince me. So, like, I want you to put so much thought in it. You could do a PowerPoint mm. on why mm. you think you deserve you deserve a two-man match. In fact, I want you to put yeah. make the PowerPoint. Simply I'd love make the PowerPoint. To give, me, give me a PowerPoint to try to like, talk me into <laughs> <the> singles match. <laughs> He's like, here's He's like, why these I- guys, they're so good. Okay, it's it's Claudio, and we're like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> this doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if we ran the zoo, my friends. <laughs> it um, would be different. There would be different it problems. It would be different. For sure, <laughs> there'd be different <laughs> problems. Be different. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that the line would be going straight up, but it'd be doing something different, you think probably. We, we're kind of the Molotov cocktails of the wrestling community. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's talking to Dave Meltzer, and he's like, yeah, everyone was on me about, like, WWE shit and, like, not, like, selling out stadiums. So I gave the book <laughs> to three girls who learned about wrestling <laughs> four years ago, and it was just, bam, just like that. I had different problems. <laughs> Oh, it is sort of God. delightful to think about how infuriated we would probably make the IWC if we were booking. Yeah, they would not be happy. Mm-mm. But no. there would be a small, but <laughs> very small vocal, vocal subset excited. who would be fucking <laughs> incandescent. The thing about us is that if we got just a few of the things that we wanted, we pretty much know for a fact because we've gotten them before. Everything else is gravy. Then yeah. we're just we're goofing about everything else. We didn't like it, but we're like, oh, I was excited when they played that match I didn't like because I went and got a little treat from the fridge. I ate some berries. <laughs> we just need a couple things we like. and We then just want a few berries. Just a few berries. Tony, graham crackers. What did we, we, one, we had one episode where we were... Dave, we were in the car with Dave Meltzer and Tony Khan in the scenario. <laughs> I don't remember that episode. I think I that do Tony was this. driving, and Dave and we and Dave were all crying and being like, "Tony, <laughs> give us what we I, want." I think that was the week that that Dave realized that Will Ospreay was probably not going to win the title at All In, and he was in so sad. We were just talking about him being in the back of Tony's minivan, like, ah, but I want a special <laughs> boy to my get special the belt. I feel like that might have been it. I For some reason, I thought it was longer ago, but we'll never find it, so... Who knows? Okay, we have a, we can take as little or as much time as we want. Well, not as much time as we want, but we can go 
light or heavy on these. These are what I've called the promos and brawls. There were no matches in here. There were just there's just talking and and, bo- and boxing. <laughs> No. Okay. Claudio and Okada squared off backstage, both in ill-fitting suits. Um, and Claudio said that Okada's championship means a lot to him. I always felt like it was my title. It was not, though. No, I don't, I don't no, think he's ever held it. <laughs> you no. know, when he said it, I wasn't interested. But now that I've read that back, I'm like, that's crazy. So that's fun. <laughs> It's also funny that he said, quote, it bothered me when I wasn't successful in the tournament. This is from the Brian Danielson School of Promos. Like, well, I was a little concerned by that. So that's a heightened emotion, right? It made me a little peaky, yeah. Yeah. It's so funny because it's like, guys, these are these are really healthy modes of expression. And I'm really glad if this is the way that you communicate in your personal life. But on screen, I'm going to need you to get absolutely wackadoo crazy. Mm-hmm. I'm going to need you to say you're mad as hell. Never thought I would say this, but we really have a plague of well-adjusted Ugh. men on our screens lately. It's disgusting. Nasty. It's not why we go here. Um, Okada said, I'm the champion. I'm a four-time G1 winner. You'll respect me when I beat you next week on Dynamite. Claudio said, I want the true Okada next week, not this bootleg version. And then he did his bitch line. I mean, he did a fun bit. I don't know why I didn't read the rest. I was just like, why am I reading this whole thing? <laughs> he did a good line. I'm sorry, Claudio. Do you want to read it? You can read it if you want. <laughs> Does anyone want to read it? Or... For a minute there, I thought you were, like, talking to Okada. <laughs> Be like, Okada, you can do it. You can do it. If you want to do your line reading for us on the pod, yeah, you can do that. Uh... Well, we don't have to read it. Anyway, I thought this was kind of a crazy segment. They, very low energy. Yeah, yeah, they didn't bring a lot of heat to this one. No. Horrible suits. Absolutely I phenomenally mean. ugly suits. Um, it's this, fine. This isn't a complaint. It's re- honestly not. When Okada is not with... When he's with the Bucks, he's very relaxed and chill and have it, clearly having a really good time. When he's with literally anybody else, you just really become aware that he's like, hello, I am famous Okada on <laughs> my retirement, uh, like, golden, you know, parachute out of real wrestling, and now I just do goofs. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And it's like, a, somehow was emphasized by yeah. Claudio, who also is bringing nothing to the table and just, like, yeah. so clearly radiating, I'm just here to have fun and to respect people. But you want me to be a little mean? I will do it. It, for you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> what Tony asked for, he gets. <laughs> okay, nothing else to say about that, maybe. Um, Mariah cut an absolute banger of a promo. This is like a pre tape package. Mm-hmm. They did not quote a single line of it on the alleletewrestling.com recap. Outrageous. Well, they did quote one line. One they quoted the one line. This was one of the best written promos I thought yes. that I've Wonderful. seen. Like, it was just really, yeah. like, I was horned up for a lot of the lines here. Yes. And, like, they had great background music and, like, all these intense visuals of burning things. And I, I mean, felt indulged. Last week I said, Why can't I have sexy fire when it's been mm. introduced? It's the gun on the wall, but you won't do any sexy fire imagery. And Mariah said, Hold my lighter. <laughs> Thank you. Killer. I'll take I'll take another any time. I um, loved when she said, "I've copied all of your successes and none of your mistakes." Mm, yeah, that ruled. Yeah, I think it's like it was so it was so well, well written. It was just like very like clean, no editing needed, perfect length of time, had the heat, and also every single thing that she said. Um, about like I'll cop I copied your successes but never your mistakes. She said something about how like you'll be obsessed with me forever. I'll never think about you again. Mm. It was all stuff that it's like, and in a perfect world, that's got to come back and bite you in the ass. There mm-hmm. is going to be a yeah. day when you are the the shoe is on the other foot, mm-hmm. and you the mask is cracking and you are going insane. Because yeah. you can't stop thinking about, like, losing to her, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Just, you know. Yeah. The amount of psychosexual, intense, <sighs> crazy issues in this. These women are Yummy. not well-adjusted, and that makes for great wrestling storytelling. Oh, it's so good. 
no one's so... mildly bothered in this one. <laughs> I was a little bothered. I was a little perplexed. <laughs> Tony went... Tony's like, Mariah, when you turned on me, I was a little confused and a little, a little bothered. Confused. I wasn't sure why you would do that, but it is what you did. It is what it is, I guess. Um, Shall we do Darby JB? Yeah. Darby. Darby got... Um, it was kind of like an art film slash normal promo crossover. Like, he was giving, like, a, a real promo's promo, but uh, in an art film, wearing his jacket and skateboarding down a street. <laughs> he loves that jacket so much. He I love it, too. For months. <laughs> Every time I see him in it, I do feel pleasure, so I can't uh, begrudge him that. Now, this is where I reached a bit of a... I reached a bit of a... Um, impediment in my ability to do the schedule so why don't you guys tell me how you felt about uh darby's promo (laughs) i didn't care for it i liked when he i liked the parts where he was calling jb like privileged and like you know that he hasn't like he doesn't know what suffering is or whatever but i really hate the shoot stuff i really hate like I like we can't be talking about all in last year. Like he was like you yeah. should have gotten fired for what you did last at Wembley last year and it's like I don't want to be hearing that. I don't. No. Darby tends to use shoot stuff in a really bad way. Usually it's just like it's not it's bad for the storyline. And this is one thing where I was like if this gimmick like the alignments are still fucked because they keep making punk the good guy and it's like we just need to throw it all in the garbage at this point and mm-hmm. like reconfigure what we're doing because uh, we're not even doing anything except bad stuff at this point yeah well and especially because it's like again so darby's being like y- y- i realized when they hired you that like it, this was just going to be nepotism 101 What did he say? He was like, I thought this was going to be a place where you could really be yourself. But then (laughs) it turns out it's just a place where the young bucks hire their friends. It it really was like, and I don't even get that mad at Darby. I've said this many times. I'm just like, well, it's just you got a couple little brain cells that you're rubbing together and you're doing the best you can. (laughs) But I did want to sit him down and just be like, well, we can't say that every week. We can't Mm -hmm. only say that every week, especially not when I'm on the internet hammering my keys, keyboard warrior style, being like, they need to be on TV. Mm-hmm. We, we can't have a whole plot line about how they are lazy because they're not on TV. They should be on TV. Mm-hmm. They need to be on mm-hmm. TV. Yeah. Jack Perry should be wrestling for me at least every other week. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's crazy. good business to point out your promotion's biggest weakness. Yeah. Not- Very good point. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. I'm a that could girl. drive... The, the line straight down into hell. <laughs> People hear they're that not and they're like, yeah. turn it off that television set. <laughs> Touching that dial. God, no, we can't reward this. Um, yeah, and then we had, uh, what did, uh, JB attacked Darby backstage and, like, um, cranked a door onto him. Yeah. 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 And I liked that very much. That, yeah, that was I fine. enjoyed that. Yeah. Yeah. They the thing is that it they are also gonna do a good match and I've at, like any time they've actually physically interacted it's been good it's just that like JB learned how to promo and then immediately stopped doing that yeah. and yeah. Darby is giving the world's most insane promos yeah it's been really frustrating to watch JB's momentum just like yeah. get undercut basically because now he's just not doing anything it's like it was a bummer. It would be really fun for JB to be in the C2. Yeah, I, I wish that the C2 were happening now. I'm, like, really needing that we hit. Are. We're I getting know. towards C2 season, though. Yeah. We're getting closer. Can't come soon enough. I keep mm. thinking about how last year Rich was, like, they really need to make a production out of it and do, yes. like, a fake pre- press conference where they yes. announce the participants and, like, announce that the – tournament is going to happen a month before it actually does mm-hmm, and then have people mm-hmm. giving promos about how like they're hoping that like vice president's principal chris daniels chooses them, <laughs> <laughs> chooses them. <laughs> tony we're just gonna throw oh we're gonna throw a couple miles of red carpet in the cart uh <laughs> we're gonna book a venue we'll put that in the cart um we'll get it all sorted out so you don't worry about a thing but just factor it put it write it down in your in your booking book from hell (laughs) um in the trios department i think that the only thing i really want to comment on 
is Christian Cage's beautiful outfit. Oh my god. He's wearing a ref shirt with, that was a turtleneck, which I loved. Mm-hmm. I think you, you said, Anne, that's attention to detail. And yeah. He's Christian, doing the work. you're doing the work. And I hope, I pray to God that Adam Copeland, that you are healing very fast. Yeah. Really fast, speedy. Yeah. When did he break his leg? Was it for Pandora? Yeah. It wasn't oh, that God. long ago. It's not that long ago. That's a I was like, surely the nine months are over. It feels like a <laughs> hundred years. I no. kind of did feel like we're probably getting close. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not close at all. And Eddie's stupid leg also. No. When did that happen? Surely we're at least six months into that one. When did no, he No, I feel it? like that one was not long before a cope. I oh, my God. Wrong. Was it right before Forbidden Door? Oh, yeah. I think, no. I think it was. And no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Time is... Um, yeah, May of 24. Yeah. Yeah, it was May. May 11th in New Japan. That's such a bummer. I have to, <gasps> I have to go. <laughs> okay. Well, fine. MJF and Osprey had a very long pre-tape. <laughs> it's amazing. Even when MJF has a pre-tape, it goes on too long. It's just that like, was, it was crazy. Incredible. I was like, we don't have. Are we like wasting time on purpose? Yeah. Filibustering. It's all yeah. the rage. Um, <laughs> it was really long, and I got a little. It's fine. It's kind of like it's whatever. I got a little annoyed in the middle because I was watching Osprey do like his sit down. Um, interview on the couch and I was like wow Osprey had a lot of energy earlier this year and I think he will again it'll be very easy he's just a very likable golden retriever so he can get the energy back but this isn't really not what he needed in my opinion no it's been like just a real not much to work with kind of perplexing Mm -hmm. feud really yeah this one is also kind of selfish like yeah it is but i guess it's less surprising yeah not to be mean (laughs) like brian danielson i thought you were better than this but mjf i knew you weren't (laughs) (laughs) and uh finally does somebody does somebody want to say the standout line from our uh our hook jericho redux promo (laughs) you don't want to say it tony i can't see out of this (laughs) song I can't it was both so funny. just shook their heads. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if you meant that line or the um, shove him up Taz's asshole. Oh, stuff. no, yes, no, I forgot about my mm. new phrase that I'll be using all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to be integrating it into our everyday life where, like, when mm. no, completely normal people insult us, we'll be like, shove it up Taz's ass. <laughs> You're going up Taz's asshole. Because I think he said he'd put him up there. I he said he was going to hook up Taz's asshole, which is it's incredibly inappropriate. inappropriate. <laughs> That's his dad. Come That's on. His, it's his literal, it's his literal dad. Do you think that I can't see out of this I was supposed to be a high comedy line from Hook? Dude. I thought it was until Mary speculated that it wasn't intended to be funny. and that <laughs> I didn't did think it was. It. I, I, after he said it and the crowd burst into laughter, I immediately was like, do you think he thought that they would laugh? <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I didn't really think so either, but it was so funny, though, the way he said it. Well, I think that's, I think that's all we got. Did I miss anything that you really, really wanted to talk about? No. No. It was so nice. Leah, <laughs> Leah's, Leah's Leah, Leah looks ago. like she's falling asleep right now. She won't even look Okay. Us. Can I tell you guys a secret? Me, yeah. you, yeah. and uh, all of our listeners. <laughs> I remember how I'm always like, oh, yeah, the weed seltzer kicks in so slow. <laughs> and you can just kind of sip at it, and you're completely fine. <laughs> I can't explain why, but this weed filter hit me so hard. And then I was filibustering, so we started the podcast late. Yeah. And somewhere in the swerve Danielson section. Was like, that was oh, so long ago. Yeah, so high. That does, just, that does explain what's going on with you, because for at least the past 15 minutes, Leah has just been looking down at the desk and like, being like, I think she's on Discord. Or <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's just someone texting her. What's going on? She's DMing on the pod. 
<laughs> oh, well, we all, it's, it's our, all of our right. We all have the right to get too high on our podcast sometimes. And we'll fight for our right. <laughs> In the electric atmosphere of Wembley Stadium. <laughs> okay. Uh, so nothing I, nothing I missed. No. It was no. so nice to have a nice week of Dynamite where I saw men that I enjoyed do wrestling for I agree. me. It was a pleasant. It was a, it was a really nice week. Manolo only gave this... Um, he said that because there were two title matches where no one won a title, he said the the title matches died with a fizzle. Okay? And then he gave the episode a B. I was like, this is the first A that we've had in about four months, Manolo. <laughs> chill, buddy. Why is God. a B such a funny grade for it? It's just, I don't know. It's like, I gave it about a B. I gave it about a B. I think it was like after you were like, Two big matches fizzled out. <laughs> B. <laughs> well, I give it a big. Who are the two big matches that fizzled out? T- title was Bucks. That wasn't a fizzle. It was a great match. And who else <laughs> oh, had a title? Mercedes. Was that oh, a title so he match? He hated the ending on both. Is that what he's complaining about? I don't know. I think he was just whining. Yeah, whine. he probably didn't like the interference stuff is probably what yeah, it was. I don't think anybody liked know, the interference at the end of the Bucks acclaimed one, but I was sort of like, we all, like, what else were they going to do? Yeah, it's, <laughs> sometimes stuff happens and you're just so, you're just like, of course, that's what, that's what this was booked for. It shouldn't be happening, but yeah. once you're here, <laughs> it's going to happen. Okay. On that note, I've been Allie. I've been Ann. And I've been Leah. <laughs> this is Tunnel Talk. <laughs> Our theme is by Chris Corgan. You can find us on Twitter and Tumblr at Tunnel Talk Pod via email, tunneltalkpod at gmail.com. Uh, you can find us wherever you get your podcasts, or you can find us on the Social Suplex. I've got to rewrite this. You can find us on the Social Suplex Network feed, where you can check out uh, some of our other great sister and brother podcasts on the network. Uh, you can find us on the Social Suplex Network Discord where we hang out and people post really fun stuff in our channel. Uh, please rate, review, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast, which I already said. And as always, you must stay frosty. You have no choice. And also, as always, you've got to come back next week to see if we can do it again. <laughs>